Hello and welcome to East Africa's first ever motor show. My name's Fariq Imani and this is Drive TV. In this episode of Drive TV, we're gonna to travel to Switzerland for the Geneva Motor Show. I'm gonna give you a very important road safety tip, but let's kick it off with a test drive of the Ford Focus 2012 by two-time Safari Rally winner, Glenn Edmonds. The first test is the G-Test on Glenn's Performance Driving School and we begin the test with the speed lane change. On this the car scores an impressive 7 out of 10. The next test is the emergency brakes test. The focus here scores another 7 out of 10. Finally, Glenn takes it through the child evasion test. The car performs even better and achieves its highest score of 8 out of a possible 10. Now begs the question. What did Glenn think of it out on the road? Four, three, two, one. I'm riding. I actually thought it was a good-looking car. I like the lines of the car, and uh, I like the, the bright red of the car. It sort of stands out. I was looking forward to driving it. I really like the way it feels right now. I actually think this is quite a man's car. It's, I, like, I like the colour, I like the, the way it feels. I like its ride, it's got a really nice ride. And I like the responsiveness of this 1600 engine. It really comes in well. But I think what impresses me most is the way the steering works. It's got a, gives you a really good feedback between the, the road and the car, and sitting in the car, you actually feel like you you have control of it. I quite like the, the Darth Vader look here. The dashboard is set up well. You, all the gauges are easy, easily readable. The, as I say, the you can pick up everything. I'm not so sure about the blue on the gauge, but I I can see what they've done. They've matched the blue with the blue of the dashboard. Yeah, it's okay, it's not one of my favorites, but it wouldn't be something that would put me off buying the car. I mean, it's got air conditioning, it's got all the basic functions, it's got a, a really good sound system, and it has uh, anti-skin. It would be nice if you could turn it off. Um, we've looked, we can't find any buttons to turn off or anything like that. It would just be a nice option for a driver who understands a vehicle to be able to turn it off when he wants to. Let's face it, most drivers are not going to drive the car off-road like I drive it. But the suspension is firm, supple enough to not be uncomfortable. The seats are okay, they can fold you quite well. And overall, I like the car. I like the way it felt off-road. I also like the way that uh, it has has a torque feature in it, so as when one wheel starts to spin, the other 
um, tightens up. It just makes for a better road handling car. The gearbox on this car is nice. It's a nice positive feel. When you engage, it's a very positive engagement. So yeah, it's got a good feel, it's got a good engine, it's got a good drivetrain. Obviously Ford have put a lot of effort into this car and it, and it shows. For three million, I would expect there to be a few more features on the car. I think this car is a good all-round car. It's nippy, revs well, accelerates well for a 1600. You can tell it's got the new model engine in it. It pulls well from the bottom. I think my favorite part of this car is the handle. It's the way it's able to turn, steer, brake. That's my favorite part. I would buy this car because it would be a fun car to drive. For that time when you get tired of lumbering your way home through the traffic. And now you've got a little bit of space to drive the car. Would it stand the test of time? Well, only time will tell. If we put it into the, the driving school and let all the students hammer it around for days on end, that would be interesting to see if it could take that sort of punishment. I would say to me, Ford have surpassed what I expected. When I saw the car today and started and walked around it and looked at it, my first impression was good looking car but it's a Ford. After driving it, I would now say good looking car, good handling car, Ford well done. Each week we bring you the latest auto news. This week we stop over at the Geneva Motor Show. It's Europe's launch pad for the newest models of the year. And all the big boys were there. Mercedes, Porsche, Ferrari, and the million euro Lamborghini Veneno. Driven in by the CEO of Lamborghini. A little interesting fact for you, only three were made and all three were pre-sold before the show. Take a look at this. As Automobili Lamborghini is marking its 50th anniversary, it presented an extremely exclusive model at the Geneva Motor Show 2013. The Lamborghini Veneno, a racing prototype and road-going super sports car. Only three unique units of the Veneno will be built and sold. Veneno accelerates from 0 to 100 kilometers in just 2.8 seconds, and the top speed of this street-legal racing car stands at 355 kilometers per hour. The Jaguar XFRS, the fastest and most powerful saloon in the company's history, makes its European debut at the Geneva Auto Saloon Show. Using the same highly acclaimed 550 PS 5-liter supercharged V8 engine as the XKRS, the new sports saloon is capable of reaching 100 km per hour in 4.6 seconds from a standing start and can go on to an impressive 300 km per hour top speed. Priced in the UK at £79,995, that is 9,599,400 shillings, the XFRS is available to order now. The all-new Range Rover Sport will make its global premiere in a groundbreaking live drive through Manhattan, New York on the 26th of March this year. Land Rover's fastest, most responsive and most agile vehicle to date will be revealed to audience around the world on the eve of the 2013 New York Auto Show. The all-new Range Rover Sport is the latest addition to the new Range Rover family of vehicles and the third Range Rover model to be launched in two years. The new BMW Series Gran Turismo adds an innovative new concept to the successful BMW 3 Series lineup. The third body variant in the current model family combines the sedan's dynamic sporting gene with the practicality and versatility of the touring. Customers can choose from a selection of five engines ranging from 105 kilowatts, that is 143 horsepower, to 225 kilowatts or 306 horsepower. Rolls-Royce Motors Limited has unveiled its latest creation, Wraith at the 83rd Annual Geneva Motor Show in Switzerland early this month. 
The new model from the world's pinnacle super luxury mark not only presents the trademark luxury and style of Rolls Royce, it also presents a unique character defined by power, style and drama. This dynamic intent can be seen in a deeply recessed grille, wide rear track and dynamic two-tone presentation. This pamper fest also has some mean muscle underneath the hood. It has 624 brake horsepower and can do 0 to 100 km per hour sprint in 4.4 seconds. Subaru unveiled the Visiv crossover concept car during the recently concluded Geneva Motor Show. This future generation crossover concept represents the new design direction and technologies that will take the Subaru brand into the future. The basic design features simple and clean surfaces and lines. The 100% motor-driven rear wheels eliminate the need for a propeller shaft, creating a lower floor that offers ample legroom for rear seat occupants despite its compact size. Probably one of the most exciting hybrid cars to enter the market, the Audi A3 Sportback e-tron promises to give a thrilling ride even when running on battery power. The e-tron can do 0 to 100 km per hour in 7.6 seconds and achieve a top speed of 222 km per hour while in hybrid mode. Well, you can use as little as 1.5 liters per 100 km while in hybrid mode, which means you can easily do a really long distance trip on just 4,000 shillings worth of fuel. In Formula 1, Kimi Raikkonen puts his team Lotus Renault in the lead in the first race of 2013 during the Australian Grand Prix. Raikkonen got 25 points after finishing the 58 laps in 1 hour, 30 minutes and 3 seconds, having started the race at 7th position. Lewis Hamilton finished his first race for Mercedes-AMG Petronas in 5th place, whilst teammate Nico Rosberg had to retire his car following an electrical problem midway through the race. And here are the standings for the Australian Grand Prix. Well, we gotta take a short break. When we come back, we get into a bit of road safety and we check out the brand new Ford Focus. Stay where you are. In this week's safety tip, we wanna to talk to you about child seats. I got a lot of friends who like to put their kid on their lap and just drive. Truth is, not only is it dangerous, it's also illegal. We're gonna save you a lot of time and possibly a lot of trips to the hospital, and all you have to do is click and go. Take a look at this. Child safety seats are seats designed specifically to protect children from injury or death during collisions. Child safety seats provide passive restraints and must be properly used to be effective. Baby car seats are legally required in many countries, including the United States, to safely transport children up to the age of two years or more. But even with these laws in place, many child safety restraints in countries such as Canada and the United States are not used properly. On the African continent, the car seat is not mandatory. The United Nations categorizes car seats into four groups. Rearward facing baby seats, that is group O baby seats or infant carriers, keep the baby locked up in a rear facing position and are secured in place by a standard adult seat belt. Forward facing child seat, that is group one, for children weighing nine to 18 kilograms roughly from nine months to about four years. Booster seats, that is group two, for children weighing 15 to 25 kilograms, that is roughly between the age of four to six years. And booster cushions, or group three, for children weighing 22 to 36 kilograms, roughly from six to 11 years. A crash test done at a speed of only 60 km per hour had this impact on the dummy. 
Why would you want to put your child or children's life at risk? It is not enough just to have a car seat, but fitting it right could save your child's life in case of an accident. Even if your child refuses the car seat, keep using it. As a parent or guardian, you know best. Be safe and save yourself the headache. In this episode of Drive TV, we pay homage to the Ford, the world's first mass-produced car created by Henry Ford in 1903. Let's just say it's come a long way from the wagon. So let's have a look at the Ford Focus 2013. We had a chance to test drive the 2012 edition of the Ford Focus earlier on in the program, but there's some key differences to this one, the 2013 edition, and I love them. It's got fog lights in the front, rear bumper sensors in the back, alloy rims, that gives you that real sturdy feeling on the roads. But what I really love about this car is that you can control everything from right here at the steering wheel, whether it's the radio, your telephone calls, if you want cruise control, if you're on Bluetooth, whatever it is, can be controlled from the steering wheel. Plus, have a listen to this. Power and silence, two key factors for Kenyan roads. So if you're in the market for a new car, you might want to check out the Ford Focus 2013. You know what I love about this car is the fact that you don't hear anything outside when you're driving it. You can hear things inside. That would be the cameraman's uh, seatbelt, but he's not wearing it. There we go, it's gone off now. I'm sure it'll come back. It's a good car for Kenyan roads. A, sturdy. B, you got the speed when you need it. And C, all the bells and whistles. The safety, fog lights at night, rear sensor bumper, uh, rear bumper sensors, which really help. This is a great car. Can't hear a thing outside. It used to be in the old days, only a Mercedes was the kind of car where you didn't hear anything outside, or a BMW. One of the best parts about living in Nairobi is 30 minutes in any direction and you're in the middle of nature. And that's where we've ended up on this edition of Drive TV. So remember to keep up with us on Facebook, it's Drive TV. On Twitter, it's at Drive TV. And if you want to visit our website, it's www.drive.tv. Next week, we take a couple of Nissans out into the wild. In fact, the wild right around here. So we'll see you then.